I'm in the process of attempting to repair and restore this 9120A printer. This is a printer that normally sits on top of the 9100B calculator. Very nice sleek design, designed in a very similar way to the calculator. So this is transistor based logic and a very old design. It was designed back in the 1960s. Uses electrostatic printing or uh, it's basically a spark erosion printing. And um, as you may have guessed, I've actually got two of these to repair. This is the first one. And in the first video in this series, I just took the cover off and we had a quick look inside. So in this video, what I want to do is dismantle this into its major sub-assemblies and try and get some idea as to what we're up against and how much work is going to be involved in uh, restoring this. So first things uh, to look at is the outer cover. The cover itself is in fairly good condition, needs a good clean, um, but as ever the two mounting clips are broken. Uh, these are nearly always broken. I think I've only ever seen one that wasn't broken and um, the way this is normally fitted is these should have a hook on the bottom, a little catch, and uh, when you open this, this uh, clips onto this front corner, one at each side, and when you dismantle it, you should be able to just put your finger under, pull it forward, and the front should pop up, and then you just loosen off the two captive screws at the back, and the cover should lift out. But the plastic goes uh, incredibly hard after uh, a few years, and they, they just snap off. And so you'll find that on almost every one of these that you see, the front is kind of flopping about, but the back is screwed into place. Uh, so what I'll be doing, of course, is making a couple of replacements for this, and uh, that will hold the front cover uh, into its correct location. rest of this is uh, in good condition, just needs cleaning. I've also removed the remnants of the belt. As you can see, very little of the belt uh, is left. Uh, almost all of the rubber material has completely disintegrated, and this normally sits uh, at the side here and takes dry from the motor to the paper drive roller. Uh, this is also the head um, movement uh, mechanism which we'll have a look at another time. Uh, as you can see I've also partly dismantled the print head. Um, someone suggested that I do more macro views but my camera doesn't have a macro lens so I can't do that. But we will have a look at this in a future video under the microscope. Um, I took this apart because there's an awful lot of debris. Can, all this white material is um, produced because of the spark erosion process. But I noticed that there was an issue with the print uh, head itself in that the little uh, grub screw that sits in here um, was missing and the uh, little wedge that holds the fingers in place uh, were uh, basically had fallen out or was halfway out. Uh, so there's a little clip and um, this is the uh, print head, it kind of sits like this and the fingers uh, extend down here but we'll look at that in a future video but we'll need to repair that and get the uh, small fingers on the end of this sorted out. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect all the wires. Um, I know where all these go but if uh, you haven't done these before then either take reference photographs or uh, just make a note of where they all go. Um, but they all just plug onto the various boards. So you should be able to just pull these off. Be very careful with this lead. I've also noticed there's a lot of green corrosion in this, so I'm slightly concerned about this. I might have to get some new ones made. Um, the other um, machine may be the same. I haven't looked inside it yet, uh, but we'll see what we're up against with that one. But this one certainly looks to have some corrosion in there disconnected uh, over on this side as well. So we've got this sensor board at the front, so we can just disconnect that. Okay, and then the same again at the back. Okay, so if you're just repairing it, then of course you don't need to do that. You can just um, take off whatever connections you need to and then we have a couple of connections on the relay board. 
Okay, next thing is to take out the three screws that hold the PCB in place and then we should be able to just lift the front of the PCB slightly and unplug it from the two edge connectors at the rear. Okay, so that's the PCB disconnected. Looks to be in good condition. Some kind of grease or liquid at the bottom. Possibly someone has been squirting contact cleaner into the switches, but I'll clean that up later. It's got a cross down here, which uh, I'm not sure what that indicates, but we'll come back to that. Uh, next thing I want to do is get the uh, main drive out. I need to disconnect it first. Okay, and with that removed, we can get access to these screws at the back if we want to remove just the top cover of this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the entire mechanism out. Okay, and the next thing is to turn it, uh, I'll flip it up and take the screws out that hold this mechanism in place. It's actually on compliant mounts, so it moves around, but I need to take the bracket off of the entire mechanism out and uh, we'll strip that down in a later video. So as you can see, these, these um, plastic bits or rubber bits are disintegrating. It's turned into a kind of a very hard material. Uh, should be quite soft and compliant, but it's um, just turned brittle. Okay, so that's the screws out of the base. I'm just going to finish unscrewing this. I left the screws in because I didn't want this flopping about while I was taking the screws out of the bottom. Okay, and then we can unscrew the relay board. Okay, so what we have to do now is unplug the wires that come from the transformer that go into this. So we've got uh, black, blue and white. And they... Okay, so I'm just going to disconnect these three wires. Okay, and then finally, just to get this out of the way, we can just pull off these three uh, main motor drive wires and that will release this entire mechanism and it will free up all the various parts. We've now got everything uh, essentially disconnected apart from this motor. Okay, so now we can lift this out of the way completely. Incidentally, these are supposed to be in one piece and it looks like someone's attempted to glue them at some point, uh, but they always break. Uh, so again, I'll probably make some uh, replacements for this. I may even make a completely different version. Um, the original reels of paper are pretty much impossible to find. So you can make um, 3D printed inserts to go in here that will suit a more modern um, paper reel. Incidentally, this motor we'll have a look at in a future video. Very interesting type of motor. And uh, this entire mechanism, I suspect, is where most of the work will be in restoring this. So we'll come back to that in a future video. So the next thing is we'll get the power supply removed. So again, looks to be in good condition. We'll need to check the condition of these capacitors very carefully. They don't look too bad, but um, probably hasn't been powered up for a very long time. Uh, so we'll come back to that in a future video. Next thing I want to do is remove the mains transformer. Okay, and I will test that separately before we refit it. If these need rewinding, they are a pain because they've got a split bobbin. It's not a single uh, winding on here, but um, hopefully that will be okay. Uh, we'll test it uh, separately. You see, most of this muck and debris in here is from what's left of the belt, although it does look like we have remnants of some wildlife in there. Let's get rid of that. So now I can take the remaining screws out and we can remove all this in one piece. I just need to make sure that we unclip 
uh, the remaining wires so we don't uh, tear them off. Okay, we've got this one here that's riveted on, um, but we'll come back to that in a second once we've got this released. And uh, the remaining screws we can access from the underside. Okay, so I've desoldered that and we can now hopefully just pull that out. And we can lift this away. I can now inspect all the terminals, check the switch and make sure everything is um, as it should be and of course clean it. So it doesn't look too bad, just uh, a bit on the grubby side so we can deal with that in a separate video. We'll just get this out of the way. Okay, well that's pretty much everything off the top. We still have the mounting brackets. So these are the clips that uh, hold this to the top of the calculator. They look to be in fairly good condition. I'm not going to take these off, they're not broken, they need cleaning, but uh, they're riveted on, so I don't want to remove those. I will need to get rid of this um, black... So this is supposed to be rubber, but it's uh, petrified. Uh, so I'll be replacing that with something a bit more suitable. If you try putting this on top of the calculator, it'll just scrape all the paint off. Uh, needs a really good clean, but um, is in fairly good condition. It's okay, so that's um, the unit stripped down. You can see the next step is to clean uh, all the major parts. You can see all the debris that's coming off of this. I'll get rid of the uh, black material, as I said, and um, we can go from there. I'll clean all the other parts up, and um, again, I won't show that on camera. It's just um, basically cleaning each board, uh, checking it um, for anything obvious. Uh, checking any major capacitors, any tantalum capacitors um, we'll check as well. Look for any poor joints or dry joints, anything that needs attention. And then we'll go through the uh, main control board. It doesn't look too bad but um, I'll just do some static testing on this as I did with the calculator boards. Uh, and then we can start looking at the major components. A lot of dirt and nut down in the switches by the look of it, so they'll need cleaning. But the board itself seems to be reasonably clean. No sign of anything burnt up. The most likely points of failure on this board are the drive transistors. They have quite a hard life, um, so we will need to check those fairly carefully. Uh, and of course this, um, may, this flexible cable may well cause us some problems, uh, but we'll come back to that. And then of course, as I said, most of the work is likely to be in this section. The So basically what we have here is a drive motor at the back, performs several functions, and um, the main one of course is to drive the print head, and the um, there's a kind of a roller in, at the bottom here with a zigzag groove in it, and that's responsible for moving the uh, print head back and forth across the face of the paper. We've then got this um, lens cut off uh, paper guide. This is the um, paper tensioner. So this here is what's left of some paper. This material here, uh, it's a very weird material. It's, it turns into this very weird um, kind of almost like separate crystals and it grows and expands and that can uh, damage other parts. I can't turn this at the moment without putting a lot of force. I don't want to break anything so I will need to completely dismantle this and uh, we'll have to make up a new roller for it. And uh, of course the rest of it needs cleaning. This white material as I said is just the uh, what's left over uh, as a result of the print uh, technique that it uses. We'll need to make up some new guides so that all supports. These are support what's left of the supports for the, um, the paper reel. Uh, we've got a sensor here that's used to detect the position of the, uh, basically where the, the, the roller is that's driving the uh, head back and forth. Um, we've got a switch here that's, um, this is operated by the button on the outer case, this is for the paper advance. Um, and then of course we have the uh, missing drive belt. So what we'll look at in the next video is we'll strip this unit down further, 
take the top cover off, take the actual print head uh, side of it apart and try and get the roller out and then see how we can go about making up a replacement roller. Um, so you can see um, got quite a bit of work to do on this and this is just the first of a pair and um, what I'll do between now and then the next video is just have a quick look inside the second unit and see if that's in a similar condition. I suspect it is. They tend to all uh, be in this sort of condition. For whatever reason they do not seem to fare as well as the actual calculators. The materials they used seem to be uh, far less able to withstand the, uh, the passage of time. The plastics they used in particular are extremely fragile. I should surprise this is not correct. Um, but um, as I said, I'll need to make up a few replacement parts. I'll need to uh, figure out what to do with this and then we'll have to figure out how we're going to get the print head working.